Hello everyone, this is Shalu Kumar again from ONTC. I'm an experienced OSCE nurse trainer for the NMC OSCE exam in UK and also the lead trainer for OSCE nurse training Cambridge. In today's video, I will be talking about one of your skill stations, which is pain assessment. I hope you've been liking my videos. So if you do like my channel and my videos, please press the like button now and subscribe to my channel. It just keeps me motivated to make some more videos for you to obviously help you in passing your OSCE exam. Okay, so we're going to be talking in this video today, I will be talking how to complete pain assessment station on your patient and what does it involve, how, what's the flow of the station and also my five top tips at the end like always. Okay, so let's talk about pain assessment. So it's a six minute station. So you're going to verbally assess your pain in six, a patient pain in six minutes. So you can be given a written scenario or a brief verbal briefing from your patient. Uh, from your assessor about the background of the patient okay so it will be either a little written scenario on a paper or a verbal uh, you know verbally your examiner will tell you who your patient is and what's their background okay uh, so then you are asked to complete this station in six minutes okay and the technique you've been asked by the NMC to use is PQRST so we're going to look into that technique today and how to use that for pain assessment so I will start the station with same way scene safety close the curtain clean your hands and then obviously explain the procedure to your patient take consent if you if your examiner hasn't told you that ID check already has been done then you do need to do the ID check uh, against your documentation and then explain and take consent now you can start your pain assessment so how do we use this tool called PQRST? So we're going to look at it. So for P is for provokes. So that is that we're going to ask our patient First thing is where the pain is, okay? And also the reason of the pain, if your patient knows. And second thing, uh, third thing will be what makes it better? What provokes it? What makes it better? What makes it worse, okay? So we need to know that. So that's all about P. And then we're going to move on to Q, which is quality of the pain. So here we're going to find out from our patient, what does the pain feel like? Okay, so we're going to ask the patient, what does it feel like? Does it feel like dull pain, sharp pain, stabbing, burning, shooting, crushing, or throbbing? Okay, what does it feel like? Because that can tell you a lot about the pain. And the next thing is uh, R which is radiating on your screen now so what do, what does it mean it means it's like we know that sometimes pain can radiate to different parts of the body so that's what we're trying to find out here so where is it does he stay in one place does he move around does he go somewhere else did he start somewhere else initially so we really do need to know that because that can give us a lot of extra information and the next one is s which is severity which is the easiest one i guess because we just need to know how bad the pain is so we're going to use the universal pain tool of 0 to 10 which is 0 being no pain and the 10 is the worst pain for your patient so ask your patient to score uh, uh, themselves on the pain tool of 0 to 10 and give you a score verbal score okay that will tell you how bad the pain is and how you can manage it or treat it okay because it will depend on whether it's mild moderate or severe so we do need to know that number on the scale and the next one is t which is for the time period so uh, this is about how long the pain has lasted okay does it come and go does he uh, you know is it there all the time is it constant so how long it's been there for and uh, you know and so we need to know that because that really will affect our management of the pain as well. So once you have gone through your PQRST, um, then you are going to go ahead and verbalize your actions. What will you do? It's not just good enough to do the pain assessment. We have to manage the pain for the patient. So first thing is to acknowledge. Tell your patient that you understand they are in pain and offer them, offer change of position, maybe extra pillow, maybe if it's a post-operative pain uh, wound, then maybe we can support the wound. So what can we do to help the patient with pain initially? And then the next thing to ask is if your patient already had some pain relief, has it been effective? If not, then you need to arrange for the suitable pain relief straight away. 
okay without delay you're going to arrange a suitable pain relief for your patient that's what you're going to verbalize okay that i will arrange it as soon as possible okay and the third thing is if and refer your patient to the medical team medical team need to know that your patient is in a lot of pain uh, and also you can think about referral to the pain uh, pain team as well so medical team and pain team referral and the next one is uh, that you will verbalize that you will check your patient pain regularly because it's not it's not good enough to check the pain just once we need to know whether the medication is working so we do need to reassess it regularly and we will do that and the next one is that you will verbalize that you will document everything about the pain assessment in patient notes clearly because that's really important and the last one is you make sure you reassure your patient because it can be quite frightening when patient is in constant pain all the time so you need to make sure they are reassured that their pain will be managed uh, with regular pain relief okay so now my five top tips so that's the end of your station you will clean your hand and finish your station so my five top tips now the first one is time management 6 minutes do go very quick even though it's a simple station but you still need to make sure that you can practice you practice it with a timer and you can finish it in 6 minutes second thing is uh making sure you use this systematic approach of pqrst okay don't mix your alphabet and just go systematically and you should know what to ask uh, under every heading so practice that third thing is make sure you have looked at the marking criteria set by the test center that's really important i always remind you that because that's your guidance how to complete a station as well now tip number 4 four uh, is about being very very clear in your voice okay because it's a verbal station and you need to make sure that you are doing it uh, with a good speed but also just being very clear so your assessor examiner can hear you correctly and my last tip is making sure you do not finish the station just with pqrst you need to verbalize your actions which i have already gone through with you on the screen very clearly at the end without that it's not a complete station so those were my five top tips for this station i hope this video has been helpful to you please press the like button now and subscribe to my channel like i said it just gives me lot of motivation to keep making videos for you and also i welcome uh, very much welcome your comments as well so and some feedback those are will be great as well and uh, also you can visit us on uh, oskinastraining.com and i will soon be back with another video for you about one of your other oski stations bye for now